Now moving on to the Mini GP70 category. Race three for these youngsters. Joshua Watley, Callum Beach and Harvey Claridge have been the fastest three all weekend. But Beach missed out last time around with a fall. The closer races so far have been for fourth to eighth positions and we'll see if that trend continues in the third race of the afternoon in this category. Riders on their warm-up lap and so far it's been faultless weekend for Joshua Watley who was over half a second quicker in qualifying than Callum Beach will start alongside him on the front row of the grid for this third and final race of the weekend in the Mini GP70 category. What the unbeaten then from two appearances. Callum Beach uh, had a DQ to his name from his second appearance after a fall that caused a red flag stoppage uh, and of course the declaration of the result as it was at the time of the stoppage uh, with Callum Beach effectively ruled out at the point standing. So he's got a lot of work to do in championship terms against Joshua Watley, who's already stolen a march with a 30 point advantage but uh, starting alongside him on the grid here on the front row. So it's Watley and Beach on uh, row one. Row two is with Harvey Claridge, a podium finisher in each of the two races so far on the number 16 bike. And then we talk about that battle that I mentioned for fourth to eighth positions. Uh, P4 on the grid, Brody Crockford, a fifth and sixth place finish so far. Jeremy Knight, who grabbed that last step on the podium uh, last time out in race two after Callum Beach's drama. He sits effectively in third in the championship, but with Callum Beach having outperformed him so far, and we'd expect him to be among the front runners in that race for fourth position. As we watch for the lights then and prepare to get underway. Watch then for Jeremy Knight, who I've talked about from the third row of the grid. He has made a good start, good enough to move through into fifth place. Joshua Watley making a fast start once again, Callum Beach in tow. Claridge and Crockford, and then it's Knight who's managed to lead away Jay Abel from the third row of the grid. We expect the midfield squabbles to be the closest here because, as I said previously, Joshua Watley was uh, faster than Callum Beach, both through qualifying and in the opening two races of the day. Watley, the class of the field in this mini GP70 category so far here today. Look at that advantage out in front. That's absolutely astonishing, the gap even as early as lap number one. Good race on though for second position and a separate race at the moment for fourth. A big thunderous move down the inside into Raymond's. That came from absolutely nowhere, but uh, not quite able to get that move done. Harvey Claridge is relegated back down into third position again. He came from way back into Raymond's, down the inside of Callum Beach. Beach then cut back up the inside, coming off the turn, carried his momentum away and down the home straight and back pass down towards the hook. So Beach restoring himself to second position. Harvey Claridge relegated to third place. It's Watley out in front. He's pulled out almost a two second advantage on lap number one. Joshua Watley on the number 70 bike, the comfortable race leader ahead of Callum Beach in second. That's where the closest race is at the moment after Harvey Claridge's excellent uh, effort down the inside into Raymond's last lap around. Can he perform something similar? He's got the momentum coming off the Dell. Will he look to the inside again? He's not quite close enough this time around. He's going to try and build it up around the outside. Separate race for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth positions. So we're going to have a change of position for seventh. As up the inside comes Oscar Pinson to make the overtake manoeuvre on uh, Louis Rendell, who's now relegated down to eighth. So it's Watley, Beach, Claridge, Knight. But the main change on that last lap around was Oscar Pinson getting the better of of Louis Rendell down the inside into Raymond's. There's a group of five riders running in a pack here. Crockford and Abel on the tail of Jeremy Knight all within a second of fourth position. And then Oscar Pinson who's trying to gain background on that uh, mid-pack group, having got the better of Louis Rendell. Still a race on for second position and a separate race for fourth. Jeremy Knight at the moment holding on. That's Brody Crockford right in behind in P5. Again, no change for second place. Claridge just feeling his way onto the tail of Callum Beach. Crockford thinking about a move on Jeremy Knight, but not able to do anything about that. And Jay Abel is right on their tail now. Every rider in the field set a new personal best on lap three. So they've stepped it up from lap two to lap three. And this group of five riders is where the majority of the position changes look set to occur, with Joshua Watley setting a new fastest lap of the race. Almost two seconds faster than Callum Beach's time in second position, which himself, uh, he himself notched a new personal best. 
Beach and Claridge nice and close in second and third places, but there's been no real change in the status of that battle. It's the tussle for fourth, fifth and sixth positions at the moment that's the most enticing as the inside run is with Brody Crockford. He's got the advantage coming off the Dell. He looks to the inside into Raymond's. He can't get the move done. That's killed his momentum. Jay Abel has now got the speed coming off Raymond's. The three of them are nose to tail as they come back down to turn one and moving to block. It's Brody Crockford holding on ahead of Jay Abel and Crockford again having to run right around the outside then of the hook to hold on to that fifth position. It's Jeremy Knight, Brody Crockford and Jay Abel all setting new personal best last lap around as they try and keep with one another's pace and see if they can't do anything about the group ahead. But at the moment, there's a massive gap between third and fourth positions. And then after that, it's that group that I talked about before we even got underway with this race as being the uh, potential fight. It's a five-way tussle over fourth position. It's still Jeremy Knight leading them, but it's Jay Abel who has managed to leapfrog Brody Crockford and up into fifth position. Abel then looking down the inside in the challenge for fourth, can't get there. Jeremy Knight holds on, but it's Abel who's made the progress on that last lap and he's swerving around on the tail of Jeremy Knight. He sees blood here. He has a real opportunity to uh, take fourth position from Jeremy Knight, who was holding back Brody Crockford, who's now holding back Jay Abel, but it might not be for much longer. Abel diving down the inside, can't quite make the move stick. It's nice and close between those two, between Jeremy Knight in fourth position, Jay Abel in fifth. Brody Crockford was the one to lose out in all of that squabbling uh, further down the order. No change in the race for second position. Still two tenths of a second between Callum Beach and Harvey Claridge, who are over eight seconds now behind Joshua Watley up in front. And uh, Jay Abel has made that overtaking manoeuvre. So dropping back is Jeremy Knight and Brody Crockford has also managed to find a way through by the looks of it. So Crockford's up ahead of Abel, ahead of Knight rather, who's dropped two positions and may even drop another here as uh, through, well, the riders are all firing their way through now. It's Abel who's come up to fourth, it's Crockford who's come up to fifth, Knight dropping two positions in one lap. Abel and Crockford have the pace advantage. There isn't even time to take a breath here in race three of the Mini GP 70s. Joshua Watley almost 10 seconds clear of Callum Beach and Harvey Claridge. Claridge gaining ground last lap around on lap number six. He's within two tenths of a second now of the race for second position. Beach versus Claridge. Fourth and fifth positions have steadied themselves out here. Looking at the race for second place and Claridge went for a lunge once again down into Raymond's. Charged through up the inside. Beach repaid the compliment. So uh, more overtaking in second and third positions. We're with the battle for the middle order places. Abel Crockford are fighting over fourth position. Knight, Rendell and now Pinson joining the back of the group in eighth place. Really entertaining midfield scrap. There's only 10 riders in this class, but you wouldn't believe it because that's how many of them are fighting over real positions. Watley's well clear, another new fastest lap of the race with a 48-8 last time around again, almost two seconds faster than Callum Beach. He just passes race control for the race lead. And talking about passing, here we have the battle for second position. Not quite close enough this time around. Harvey Claridge made the inside lunge a lap ago, but wasn't close enough to uh, try it again on Callum Beach on lap number eight. So still around about that two tenths of a second mark between the two of them. The battle behind, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh, that's spreading out a little bit, but it's Brody Crockford who's making the progress on the tail of Jay Abel, waiting for an opportunity to try and make that pass. Those two have been dicing for position right the way through. We've got uh, battles right the way to the back of the field with Felix Hearn and uh, Luke Coggins, who were uh, almost line abreast coming into Raymond's last time around. That's for ninth position and the penultimate spot in the race results but it's Watley leading the way. Second with Callum Beach. Harvey Claridge is trying to go for the inside here. Coming onto the hangar straight, he's got the better run. Can Claridge make a move stick here on Callum Beach? The race for second, he hasn't got quite enough to get alongside. He's gonna go wider into Raymond's, make the turn back up the inside of the hairpin. The two almost run level over the start finish straight, but it narrows down into the first turn. And that's one of the toughest places to make a pass on the entrance to the hook and having to back out of it. Harvey Claridge still waiting for an opportunity but that lap around, he was less than a tenth of a second behind Callum Beach, who sits in second. Watley, Beach, Claridge, then 10 seconds further down the road, Jay Abel is only just holding off Brody Crockford in the battle for fourth position. They're running about a second a lap 
off the pace of Callum Beach and Harvey Claridge in second and third positions. Beach leading Claridge, who's dropped back on this lap, so there's no opportunity for him to make a pass on this one. Lap number 10, and time is ticking away, and it looks as though actually second position is settled. How about fourth position with Jay Abel? Well, Abel seems to have lost out, actually. Crockford's made his way through. So the number 55 bike has got the better of the 303, Jay Abel, down the bottom end of the circuit. Jeremy Knight is now right on the tail of Jay Abel. So it was Abel who was making the progress earlier on. As down the inside comes Louis Rendell to take sixth position away. And now they're side by side all the way through the hook, but uh, reclaiming the position at Jeremy Knight. So by sticking to the outside line into turn one, he then had the inside on the hook. So although Rendell had made the position, uh, he wasn't able to hold on to it. But we've got some frantic struggles right the way through from fourth to seventh positions at the moment. And, uh, well, right the way from second and third as well, who are enjoying their own battle. In fact, Callum Beach and Harvey Claridge closing up again as we're into the final lap. And opportunities are running out for uh, position changes here. Watley leading the way. Beach and Claridge over the line, with Claridge setting a new personal best and gaining almost, well, eight tenths of a second on Callum Beach, who sits second, and less than two tenths of a second between them. What a race this is turning out to be for second. As they work their way through the back markers, Callum Beach making his way through. 20 seconds clear, it's been another dominant display. He's going to make it three wins out of three, but in the race for second, it'll be Callum Beach who will take it, surely, ahead of Harvey Claridge. They're still almost nose to tail as they come onto the hangar straight for the final time in the race for second. Callum Beach holding on. Harvey Claridge not within striking distance, about four or five lengths back. He's going to go for the cutback, coming off the final turn for the final time. Drag race down to the line, almost side by side, but Callum Beach holds on. And Harvey Claridge, despite setting his personal best on the final lap, and despite getting the momentum coming off the final turn, can't quite make the move. And there's further position changes as Jay Abel loses out to Jeremy Knight, but then in the drag race to the line gets it back as well. So two brilliant passes on the final two turns, but both coming to nothing with perfect cutbacks, changing the positions back to the order they were before, with Watley taking the chequered flag. Callum Beach repaying the compliments on Harvey Claridge after some excellent racing between the two of them as the race went on. Brody Crockford taking fourth position. Jay Abel held that position for a while, dropped back, recovered the position again. There was so much entertainment from, from positions four to eight, as I suggested there would before we got underway. And rounding out the top five in the final race in this category this weekend, Brody Crockford and Jay Abel. Coming up after the break, more pit bike action. It's pit bike open this time with the rising star in motorcycle racing, Charlie Nesbitt. He's back. <laughs> 